Welcome to this Bible study to read from the King James Bible, Second Corinthians chapter 3. The Apostle Paul is talking and says, Do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Why send this? Uh, because uh, already then some people were going around like, you know, oh, you know, listen to this uh, guy, uh, he's really inspired. A letter of commendation. We don't need this. Because the apostle said, ye, the Corinthians, who have been saved now, you know, by grace, thanks to the preaching of Paul, you are our epistle written in our hearts, known. <clears throat> and read of all men for as much as he are manifestly declared to be the epistle of christ ministered by us written not with ink but with the spirit of the living god not in tables of stone but in fleshly tables of the heart now of course <clears throat> He is making a comparison with the fact that the law was written on tables of stone but the spirit operation of the spirit is in the fleshly tables of the heart <clears throat> and such trust a we through Christ to go toward, towards God but the apostle is very humble yes because not that we have not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves but our sufficiency is of god who also has made us able ministers of the new testament not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives life Please, doesn't mean it doesn't mean that the Bible, you know, the letter of the Bible kills. Some people want to take away the Bible and wound la bam, 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 They want to go in this uh, what they call, what they think, what they presume to be, you know, something from the Spirit or new revelation. No, 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 no. This is just a comparison between Moses and the grace of God in Christ. The Spirit gives life, meaning now we are under grace, now we are sealed by the Spirit of God. We are alive in Christ because we are dead. We are alive unto God because we are dead in Christ. Dead to the law by, by the Spirit, by the body of Christ. Anyway, he's made a comparison. And he says, but if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away comparison how shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious in other words when God gave the law to Israel, the law in, if, in effect, in reality, was going to be a ministration of death. Because there is no man, no woman, no, no human being except the Lord Jesus Christ, who, through God, the true man, who will be able to obey the law. Because the law is spiritual. It needs to be obeyed from the inside out. It's not a question that, you know, a physical an outward appearance you know that's very very typical of religion you know you put up a facade a mask no the operation of God is an operation which happens by grace praise God we are saved by grace through faith I want to just share this with you in total frankness openness I want to be open I never seen the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Some people say they do, you know, they had visions, imagine, I don't know what. I never seen Moses. I never seen Peter, James, or John, or Philip, or Bartholomew, or Andrew. I never seen the Apostle Paul. I've never seen Daniel. Never seen Ezekiel. Ne I haven't seen anyone. I haven't even seen Adam, Adam and Eve. What I'm trying to say. We have a book, King James Bible, in this case, because English-speaking people. This is preserved, you know, inspired. Without error, we have a book, the Bible. We read this Bible. We can make it. We must make a choice. We the believe it, as it's written, and we understand the spiritual application in our lives, present and future, like this life now and the life in the future, in the spiritual life. Oh, my dear friends, we have nothing. Because we are in the dispensation of the grace of God. God is not performing miracles, wonders, even though there, are, there is a pleasure on every ending of this. I call it, sorry, you know, deceivers of religions. They want to make you believe that God is raising the dead, giving sight to the blind, casting devils out of people in the power of the name of Jesus and because of the power of the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. We haven't got any possibility to, as you say, you say people, hey, look, look what God is doing now. Bam, bam, bam. We have a book. We all have a book. We all read this book. We all either believe it or reject it. There is no middle ground in, in the fact that if we want to be in the fellowship of his son, if we want to be in the fellowship of Jesus Christ according to the scripture, we need to make a decision to believe it on the basis that we credit God with what he declares to be truth. We're talking about the word of truth. The King James Bible, 66 books, is the word of truth. Now, we need to rightly divide this truth from truth. In other words, there are parts of this Bible that cannot in any possible way be applicable. Applicable, sorry, applicable. I mean, I'm Italian, sorry. Can be applied to us. But there are parts of this Bible that are directed to us. So we need to be able to distinguish, to divide, to be able to separate, so to say, the operation of the Spirit of God now in the dispensation of the grace of God toward people that become part of the body of Christ, the new creature, the revelation of the mystery, and the operations of God and His Spirit towards His earthly people, the nation of Israel. We have the different, we have different Gospels here, you know. I know that many people freak out, but what can I do? I really don't care. I got to say as it is. There is more than one Gospel in the Bible, more than one, oh, of course. And I'm not referring to the four Gospels, which Mark to Mark. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those are the, record, the, the records, you know, the written records of the birth, life, ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, the earthly ministry to his nation, Israel. He said very clearly in Matthew 15, 24, he said, I've been sent by only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We were not included in that ministry but we are included in the heavenly ministry of christ anyway but if the ministration of death written and engraved in stones was glorious so notwithstanding it was glorious because the children of israel could not steadfastly behold the face of moses for the glory of his countenance 
Glo uh, Moses had been on the mountain. Eh? He had an encounter, so to say, been in the presence of Almighty God. Now, I am even, in my, in my understanding, I think that God kind of either gave a special power to Moses or it, it showed, you know, not the fullness because God is so glorious that no flesh, no, you know, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We cannot be in the presence of God in this earthly sinful body that we have now we are in fallen condition in adam you know we're not as adam and eve before the fall by reading and studying i understand that adam and eve before the fall they had fellowship with the lord because he was coming down in the towards the evening and they were in the garden together in a wonderful harmonic harmony fellowship communion it didn't happen after the fall they've been cast out from the garden of eden not only that they lost their innocence they, they realized they were naked in my understanding but that's my understanding i don't want to impose this on nobody they were clothed with light and when they disobeyed when they rebelled when they turned their back to god and his word and his commands they lost the light and they realized they were naked in the you know like you know they lost the light this is my understanding because i connect to the fact when christ was transfigured on the mount of transfiguration they call it you know in the presence of, of uh, the three Peter, James, and John. It was so full of light, more than the, the sun in, 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 in its glory, you know, like uh, that was a manifestation of the kingdom of God on earth. Imagine what's going to be when we're going to be in glorified bodies without glorious, glorified Lord. The administration of death written and engraved in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away because, you know, that was not forever. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? The glory of God, you know. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 9. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, the law, you know, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceeding glory. What does it mean, the ministration of righteousness? God is righteous. God is holy. God is totally perfect. Is good inside out. No, sin and evil cannot even stay in his presence. And we need the righteousness of God to be with God. And how in the world are we going to gain that righteousness in our condition? In our best, best, best day, we are good for help. I know that our flesh doesn't like this the religious spirit that we all have doesn't like this because we think that somehow some way we we managed to make ourselves uh, you know accepted by god because we pray because we fast because we did the bible because we go to church because we give tithes come on we need the grace of god and praise God, God has given grace, and we need the gospel of the grace of God, and praise God, there is the gospel of the grace of God. I said there were many gospels, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is just a record, but what about the gospel in Eden, the gospel of circumcision, the gospel of the kingdom? It's totally different from the gospel of the grace of God in Christ, which allows anyone, anywhere, on this earth of God to be saved and sealed by grace 
is a free gift of God because Christ shed his blood. He died for our sins. Please notice on the line, he didn't faint. Now, as you understand who Christ is, then you might eventually appreciate this glorious operation of God because if you just think that Christ was just another one, another prophet, another man, like many, but once you understand this, true God and true man, this perfect true God, true man goes and die on that Calvary cross, that horrible death by crucifixion for sinners, ungodly sinners. That's going to shock you. At least it should create a reaction that you go on and in the investigative description and say, wow. So he's telling us. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. So this righteous now gets imputed justification, righteousness and justification by imputation. It gets imputed because of Christ to the one who believes in the one that raised Christ, that believes in God, believes in that Christ died for his, his, her sins. He was buried and rose again the third day to justify us. So we receive an incredible number of spiritual blessings in Christ and because of Christ, for Christ's sake, always in Christ, not in ourselves. It is nothing to do with ourselves. We, benef we are beneficiary. We are the beneficiaries of this great wonderful glorious work of God for even 2 Corinthians 3 10 that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excels for if that which is done away was glorious much more that which remains is glorious and that's why Paul says in verse 12 seeing then we have such hope we use great plainness of speech <laughs> some people wouldn't think so and to be honest I need to study to understand but in reality the gospel of the grace of God is so simple that a child can receive it it's simple because it said, you know what? You're a sinner. You can't save yourself. You're going to hell. But Christ, but God, die for your sins. All of them, past, present, future. What? Yes. Then he was buried. And then he rose again the third day to justify us. Once we believe this, we are saved and sealed by grace, through faith, no works. So no man should boast, no, no flesh boasting, no I've done this, haven't done The glory belongs to the Lord. So we glory in the Lord. Seeing that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech and not as Moses, comparison always, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. That was a temporary condition. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remains the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away with in Christ. Christ is the answer for Israel, but Christ is the answer for us. He is the one who saves us. If we belong to his earthly people, then if we belong now to the heavenly people, because we are, the body of Christ is destined to heavenly places. Nevertheless, talking about Israel, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Paul says, 
2 Corinthians 3, 17. Now, the Lord is that Spirit. The Lord, capital L, is that Spirit, Spirit, capital S. And what the Spirit, capital S, of the Lord is, there is liberty. It doesn't mean that in, in, you know, when people gather together in buildings they call churches, they start to call on the Spirit, follow us. And then they pretend, you know, with all these fake tongues and all this noise, and they start to roar like lions and bark as dogs. That's nothing to do. That's not the Spirit of God. The liberty means we are no more shackled by the law. We're no more in a condition of fear, because otherwise we should be fearing God, you know. Because we have received the spirit of fear, but we receive the spirit of a sound mind, spirit of, you know, a spirit of love. We rejoice in Christ. We consider, wow, I was going to hell. 100%, 100% going to hell at the end of this earthly life. And look, I have now this glorious life in Christ because of Christ it doesn't mean that I'm so in fantastic you know and I go around walking full of light means I'm saved by grace I walk by faith in his word I believe what is written even though I have no way to prove it in physical terms because when I'm sick I still pray the Lord to help me to, to heal me even though I know he is not, I have no Israel promises or kingdom gospel promises for healing, but I can rely on his grace because Paul said when he prayed three times, you know, the Lord answered, my grace is sufficient for this. Then Paul said, well, then I will glory in trials and tribulation, affliction, and infirmity, whatever it is, because when, when I'm weak, then, you know, I'm strong because God, Christ is strong, the spirit of Christ now the Lord is that spirit where the spirit of the Lord is there is here. now the Lord is that spirit 2 Corinthians 3 17 where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty 2 Corinthians 3 18 but we all we all who the body of Christ the believers not the world with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord I change into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So, our salvation, our sealing, is an instantaneous fact. Our glorification is a fantastic, glorious, when I say fantastic, I don't say like a, a dream. It's a glorious promise. But the change comes, but the, more, the more we allow this word to change our way of thinking, to detach us from this world, we are changing to the same image from glory to glory. We all, we open face, so we don't have the veil of any sort, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. What does it mean? Why in a glass? Well, we, we can't see face to face at the moment so it's like a, a blurred vision i don't think it is complete i changed you see we into the same image from glory to glory this is a process salvation is instantaneous we're we're not getting saved but the, the change in terms of understanding the scripture and uh, and the glory that brings even as by the Spirit of the Lord which is in the Word of God because the Spirit of the Lord in this, the dispensation of the grace of God is not operating like in the dispensation of the kingdom in the dispensation of the law and so forth it's not even operating as will operate in the future dispensations in times to come ages to come 
time passed, but now it just to come. So, this is a bit of a challenge to me because, you know, I never did this study with anybody. I'm daring to do on my own because I got no one else here to do this study with. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry. What ministry? It's just a ministry of preaching the gospel, the grace of God, of being in this dispensation of the grace of God. As we have received mercy, we faint not. We receive grace, but we receive also mercy. Mercy, God is not giving us what we deserve, which is punishment. Not so much even that we broke the law, because we were never under the law, even though we break it because it's written in our conscience. And in Adam, we are children of Adam, we are born sinners. Our, like our fleshly fa father, Adam. You can't escape that. You, if you're born a leopard, it was, you know, you're a puppy leopard of a leopard, you got spots. You can't change them. You can't get rid of them. It's there with you or the rest of your earthly life. You're going to have this spot on your skin. You have the nature of Adam. You know, you're going to leave it at the grave. That's why you need now to be part of the new creature by the operation of God, be put in Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory, you are in Christ. The hope of glory is not you, it's Christ in you. And God puts you in Christ, in the body of Christ. And for seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Second Corinthians 4, 2. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Hmm. This makes me so much think of this secret society. Everything is hidden. All this scheming, all this plotting, all this conspiracy. But these things are dishonest. Have renounced. Paul says this is a choice. We have renounced. So we have nothing to do with this. No walking in craftiness. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Is that possible? Yes, it is possible. I can handle the word of God deceitfully in the day and hour that I go inside a building they call church and start preaching and, and I pick up, you know, verses that belong to Israel under the law, the, the tithing, for example. And deceitfully I managed to siphon money from people when the tithe was never money and when anyway under grace there is no no tithing there is no tithing i don't i know that this is going to freak out many people that uh, i'm a great tither but you know you're under a curse because the law requires that you obey all the law not only one point even james that the, the church has lost so much james which, thank God, is not written to us, it's written to the 12 tribes of Israel. That's not us. Scattered abroad, we are scattered. You know, he said very clearly, if you break the law in one point, you're guilty of breaking all the law. The law requires obedience from the inside out, from the beginning to the end. That you, can't, you can't say, oh, well, I'll bet yesterday, today, no, but ask for forgiveness and ask that. You can't. You got to obey the law all of it. In other words, impossible. Impossible. So Paul said, We have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, no walking in craftiness, not nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Deceit. This reminds me the beguiling of Satan, you know, a lot of deceivers. You know, Paul has got a lot to say about deception. It's warnings and instruction not to fall under deception you know handling the word of god deceitfully for example in my understanding is when i even 
even though I don't apply to me because I can, if I read the Moses open the Red Sea I need to believe what is written there I cannot say that you open the, re the sea of reeds because to my limited fleshly mind seems impossible that God can open use a man actually with a stick with a, with a rod to open the Red Sea you know all, and make a two walls of water and let all these people cross on dry ground where there was water before you know the sea was there so they no and then the egyptian come behind on on wet ground because god favors his people it, it, it doesn't favor the people of the enemy and then he closes the, the, the this ocean and drowns you know the army of pharaoh i can't change it said the is what you know it was a sea of reeds so the water was very shallow so they could just cross well, then the miracle is that God drowned the, the army of Pharaoh in very shallow water. One way or another is a miracle, but please stay with the word of the Lord as it's written. I can't say, because otherwise people think I'm stupid, I don't care, that Joshua stopped the, 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 the earth. In Joshua 10, well, it's written very clearly that Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to be stopped you know and God allowed this of course Joshua didn't do it the Lord did it he just spoke and the Lord allowed this to happen you know only once in history recorded history God allowed this but means that hey if he stopped the sun and the moon what is circle on the earth is the sun and the moon not the earth around the sun the moon and the sun and the moon around the earth I mean this should be evident but oh no this is flat earth what is this flat earth the earth is not flat it is as god created it's a circle of the earth a circle is not a bow it's got mountains so it's got elevations and it's got lakes and it's got valleys so it's not flat like a pizza you know but it's sure it is not a, a spinning bow nothing is spinning I'm, while I'm talking I'm looking it is a beautiful blue sky because the water is above fluffy clouds the the wind soft uh, breeze from the ocean is moving the some of the, the, the tree leaves the birds are chirping out there and the sun is circling the earth is not moving otherwise I couldn't stand on my feet I don't come with this gravity thing of the Freemasons, Einstein and Newton and everything because it's a lie. The reality is. I got to say with the word that says that Joshua stopped the sun and the moon, not the earth. The Lord sent the, the light of the sun backwards, the shadow, you know, backwards on the world. So he sent the, the for, for Zechariah, you know, people say, I can't believe this. People don't believe that Jesus Christ did creation miracles when he gave to the guy who was born blind eyesight. Now, the, the most complex machine in this creation of God, the parents, is, is the eye because. It's made of three pieces, the eye, the optical nerve, and the brain. is an incredible... I mean, the so-called scientists, those who try to understand, they think it's amazing. Well, God just created as one of the many things. We've got hundreds of kilometers of veins, nervous system. We're com a complex machine, even though we've fallen now from the original. We need to believe this world. We have renounced it in things of dishonesty, no walking in craftiness, no handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is it to them that are lost. I want to tell you something. You cannot say, no, well, you know, I don't really need the the scriptures to Israel because I got the letters of Paul yeah praise God for the greater revelation 
for progressive revelation and finally we come to the gospel of grace of God. But Paul is preaching the same Christ that was walking in the, in the streets of Jerusalem. He's not preaching the red letters for salvation, but he's telling you that Christ, you know, according to my gospel, he was of the seed of David, you know, was raised from the dead. And people don't believe in resurrection, of course. Oh yeah, well, you know. At Easter, apparently, there is bunnies that are resurrecting. I don't know. I see. At Easter times, I see bunnies everywhere. You know, eggs and bunnies. What? Go eggs and bunnies and bunnies. I said bunnies because we have a shop here. <laughs> eggs and bunnies with Christ. At Christmas, they go crazy about the tree. And the, and, the, and the baby Jesus, you know, the puppet, the, the puppet, how you call it, you know, the doll, in the manger, in the manger, is it manger? And Mary all dressed in blue, Joseph with this stick, you know, and then the cow, and the... I, I was born and raised Roman Catholic. And they eat, they eat the, the horse, you know, they eat the body of Christ and they drink his blood. It's disgusting crap. Did I say crap? Sorry, I should have said junk. Dung? Okay, more biblical. Because Paul used that word. Anyway, sorry if I, I don't want to offend anybody, but I'm not perfect. But the reality is, to come to the gospel of the grace of God, you need to believe that Jesus Christ did exist and really walked in the streets of Israel in that time it really was born from the virgin and the birth the virgin birth was prophesied in the book of Isaiah 7th century before Christ thank you very much Isaiah 7 14 I'll go there because I don't want people thinking that I just make this up Isaiah anyway people can think whatever they want I just stay with the word Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Now, this is to Israel. Israel is always looking for signs, you know. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. You know, those traders, the one, these deceivers, they say, Alma, they, they, this was a young woman. No, it doesn't say young woman, it says virgin. So, if Christ was not born a virgin, Christ is not God, his death on the cross means nothing. Anyway, he would not be resurrected. People don't believe what is written. This is the problem. People don't believe what is written. But I do because I'm so fantastic. No, because the gospel of grace of God came to me through the preaching of somebody else. Praise God, another ambassador, okay, of the many ambassadors of Christ, for Christ. And me being a sinner in a desperate condition, I was more than glad to believe with all my heart that Christ died for my sins. That he was buried and rose again the third day for our justification. And I, for me, it's easy to believe this because when I look at creation, I know that God created. Thank God, I, I'm not part of Psalm 14, verse 153, verse 1, the fool has said in his other, there is not God. I can see that there is God, even though I don't see God. I can see his creation, what I can see. The little I see, but the, the more I see, the more I think only God, only the God, not a God. I don't like that. A God, eh? there are many false gods. The, the real God, because only God can be a creator. You see, I'm a painter in for hobby, you know, art. So I get a canvas, white, and I want to paint something, I paint. So I don't create, you know. Impossible. Only God is created. But I paint. 
I'm outside, I look at my painting and I might say it's nice or not, not so nice, whatever it is. God is outside of his creation. He's created, but he's not. Creation is not God. God is the creator. Is greater than the creation. <laughs> of course, he created it. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. You need to believe the Bible concerning creation. The Bible talks about three heavens. You want to believe the universe because NASA, all people, they say there is universe. And people that are giving you com computer generated images and a lot of stuff that you, if you buy a, an icon or whatever, a P1000, you can see the moon just like it's three meters from you. And so the moon cannot be so distant as they say thousands, hundreds of thousands of kilometers because powerful as it is, this camera wouldn't be able to bring the moon so near to you. Just a camera, you know. You can see that the moon and the sun, and the sun have got the same sides. I see all the time the moon and the sun in, in heaven, in the, in the heaven here, in the, in the firmament, at the same time during the day. And some friends uh, in other parts of the world, I call them, they see the same moon, different uh, angle, because looking the same moon from different angle, you can see the different angle, the same moon in the night there. So, <sighs> you got to say, it doesn't make you any better or, any, or greater than, but it helps you to understand you're dealing with a very glorious, powerful God, the almighty God. Where was I in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, wasn't I? But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, no walking in craftiness, no handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Hey, wait a second. Paul said, our gospel. Is that the gospel that Peter is preaching? No. No. He calls it my gospel somewhere else. I'm going to go there. With, with, you know, I got this pure Bible search, King James pure Bible search. I'm going to digit my gospel and see what happens. When this finally opens, my gospel. Yeah. Oh, look. Romans 2.16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel, not Peter's gospel. <laughs> Not the gospel of the kingdom. That's the true gospel, man. And Peter is an apostle of the Lord. But a different dispensation, a different intent, a different purpose. is earthly ministry to an earthly people, Israel. So God is going to restore them in the future. But we are the body of Christ. We are the greats. We have believed that my gospel, the Pope preaches, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. What about Romans 16, 25? Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. This gospel will establish you in the faith. And the preaching of Jesus Christ, the preaching of Jesus, we, Paul is not preaching some kind of fantastic imagination of flying a horse or something. The preaching of Jesus Christ according, dun, 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 it's not according to the guitar, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. This was, this truth, this secret was hidden in God, not in the scriptures, in God. That's why you cannot find any hint or reference in the scripture before Paul. So that's why all the Bible is for us, not all to or about us. <clears throat> we get our doctrine from Paul in his letters. But all the Bible is so important to understand that we are dealing 
with the God of truth <clears throat> and the word of truth. In 2 Timothy 2 8, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Thank you very much for. But if our gospel now, you know, because he's not alone, yeah? he's preaching with, together with Timothy, Titus, Barnabas, Silvanus, be hid, it hidden, you know, is it to them that are lost. The lost people, they have no idea that this is the gospel that says a soul, because they think they need to do something or not to do something. So they put the emphasis on themselves. They doings, they works. The gospel, the grace of God, is the work of God, is the operation of God. You have no part in it whatsoever. You are a beneficiary the moment you believe it. But if our gospel be hid, is it to them that are lost? In whom, the, the lost ones, this is serious stuff, you know. In whom the God of this world, now, all of this. The precision, the God, yes, small g, has blinded the minds of them which believe not. So, they are blind because they don't believe. The moment they believe, they will see. Less the light of what of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine unto them please so there is god with a capital g that god had actually god the father god the son god the holy ghost and then there is the god of this world with a small g ah people don't believe this what now we are in the 2019 you still believe in the devil you believe in satan yeah not that i believe that put my trap i know it exists very 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 well from the i can read in this book i find him in genesis at the beginning and i find at the end of course in revelation of course in revelation it gets much really good but he gets smash all the way with God because God I mean say there's not much for God is it how in the world this God is the omnipotent almighty God the fallen cherub is surely powerful but can't compare you know in the slightest without God but he's very crafty he's beguiling you he's deceiving you he says but if our gospel be hid, says Paul, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God that this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Gospel of Christ, we find very clearly the gospel of Christ, once again I go here to my search, gospel of Christ, let's see, when I find it in this King James Bible, uh, the apostle Paul says, Romans 1 16, for I'm not ashamed of what? Of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Apostle Paul, Romans 15, 19, though through ministry, mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about the unto Illyricum, I fully preached the gospel of Christ. At the beginning of his ministry, God was introducing a new apostle. He gave to him, to Paul, who was the enemy. So, all of Tessus, the powers, the wonders, the signs of the apostles. Once that's done and gave us a revelation of the mystery, the, the, the fullness of it. At the end, you find that Paul cannot heal nobody, no more signs or wonders. 
walking by faith, not by walking by faith, not by sight. Revelation Romans 15 21. Uh, and, I, and, and I'm sure that sure that when I come to unto you, says Paul, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Oh yeah, man, there are so many spiritual blessings. That's why in Ephesians he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Praise be to God. First Corinthians 9 12. If others be partakers of this power over you, are we not? Are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power. A suffer all things like we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Paul is not trying to have advantage, financial advantage. He's pre he prefers to suffer, not to hinder the gospel of Christ. This is the right spirit. No preaching for money or power, not the right or just to be there on the spotlight. Say, look at me, look at me. In 1 Corinthians 9, 18, what is my reward then, says Paul, verily that when I preach the gospel, I, I, I might make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. I mean, find me somebody like Paul now. You don't. You don't. You find people out there say, okay, now we need help, you know. Give us the money, honey. And now we are in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 2 Corinthians 9.13. 2 Corinthians 10.14. Galatians 1.7. This is colossal. In my understanding, when he says, you know, which is not another, but there be some the trouble you would pervert the gospel of Christ. Philippians 1.27. Only let our convers your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. First Thessalonians 3.2 and St. Timotheus, our brother, minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you, to comf comfort you concerning your faith. This expression, the gospel of Christ, is present 11 times in the letters of Paul. Wow. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, our denomination. We are the ones depository of the truth nah for we preach not ourselves by christ jesus the lord not that you make jesus christ the lord of your life boo he's lord you don't make him lord you receive him as lord for we preach not ourselves by christ jesus the lord and ourselves for the mother your servants for Jesus' sake. Wow. Second Corinthians 4 6. I don't know. It's going to take ages. I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness? When? Genesis. Go read. So God is light and he commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Praise be to God Almighty and looking for the Lord has shined in our hearts. Wow! To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God Almighty. But we have this treasure because this is a treasure, man. I am overwhelmed when I think that Christ in me, the hope of glory, Christ in you, the hope of glory that God has created, 
this new reality, the new creature, the body of Christ, we are created, created in Christ Jesus. We have this treasure in earth and vessel, these bodies, mamma mia, that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. For we which live, live sorry, are always be delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. We are dead with Christ. So then works in us, but life in you. We, having the same spirit of faith. Now, <laughs> this is the spirit of faith, you know. The Holy Ghost, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. You see, Paul was prophetic scriptures. We also believe and therefore speak. Paul is hated because Satan wants you to believe in the gospel of the kingdom because he knows the gospel of the kingdom doesn't save you. He wants to give you a mixed gospel. He wants to pervert the gospel of Christ and he's got servants to do that. But Paul, he preaches the word of truth. He preaches the gospel of the grace of God. Not that Peter does it, but Peter does to Israel. Paul preaches as the apostle preacher, teacher of the Gentiles. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that, what does he know? That he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up also us by Jesus and shall present us with you. I told you, I am Italian, I read very bad. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Wow. This written by Paul who was so the enemy of Christ who wanted wipe off the face of the earth. Did you know this? I didn't say planet. We live on a plane, not a planet. He wants to wipe off the face of the earth, the disciples, the little flock, you know, the followers of Jesus, the way, you know, Peter, James and, and company and all these people. But on the way to Damascus, he met the Lord Jesus in a glorious appearing. And guess what? That's the greatest proof of the resurrection because Paul believed that Jesus was a false prophet. But once he, he seen him risen in that glorious appearing, Acts 9. <laughs> and Christ makes of him the apostle, preacher, teacher of the Gentile. And he's talking about our resurrection too. For all things are for your sakes. That the abundant grace. Oh, I love this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Abundant grace. Not a little bit of grace, you know. Abundant. I need abundance of grace. I'm 70. I don't remember one day of my life that I didn't need grace, even when I didn't know. And evidently, by the grace of God Almighty, I'm still alive. And I received this gospel, and now I can preach it. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. And continues Paul in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, I'm reading from the King James Bible. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, tell me about it, I'm 70, I'm not the same, I used to be at 20, yet the inward man, the inner man, is renewed day by day. How? By the, the word of the Lord. The word and the spirit work this when you believe. If you don't believe, nothing happens. For our lot affliction. Oh, well. <laughs> Paul calls these troubles he went through. I mean, we never went through all the troubles and, and tribulations of Paul. I don't even compare. But he calls that a lot of affliction. 
for our lot affliction, which is but for a moment. Yeah, life is a moment, is a vapor. Works for us a far more. Please notice. Works for us what? A far more exceeding. I mean, uh, a far more exceeding. Should I read again? A far more exceeding and eternal. And eternal means never ends weight of glory. This is overwhelming to me. It's too much. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Father, for this word. Second Corinthians 4, 18. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So even though I told you I believe that we live on this plane under this firmament, three heavens and four, I know that it's gonna create new heavens and new earth. So even this glorious as it is, beautiful as it is, is a temporary condition. The apostle is telling me, is telling us, that's why we need to believe this book, otherwise we're done, we have nothing else. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Second Corinthians 5 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle where the soul, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Wow. This is immense. I got to stop because this is one hour. If anybody listening might be fainting. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we give you glory for your word of truth. For this glorious gospel of grace of God, we give you glory for Christ who died for our sins, all of them, Lord. He was buried, and his, as it's written on the third day, he rose again for our justification. Now, Lord, by believing this, by grace we are saved. We walk by faith, not by sight, trusting in your word. We thank you that even if we come short one way or another, we are not only saved, we are sealed until the day of the redemption of the precious possession and for this we give you glory father we pray that your word my rich hearts people other people may be saved because that's the will of god in this the dispensation of the of the grace of god he will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth thank you lord for your word thank you lord for the ministry of your servant the Apostle Paul through the, the letters that he wrote. And mostly, Father, we thank you for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and for you, Lord, who are the Creator, sustainer of all things. Thank you, Lord, for having preserved this word until now, so that even a dumb, a dumb, a dumb, a dummy like me can read and believe and be saved. Oh, Lord. Yours is the glory and the power forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen.